This is the temporary password uh, snippet that I've created here. So we're going to go into this temporary password API group. So a few things. I know it kind of looks like there is a little bit going on here. Um, I'll just point out, first of all, there's, I think, typical login, auth me, and sign up. I may have modified the login, but let's kind of talk about the um, temporary password snippet flow. Um, so first and foremost, you know, user comes in and says, shoot, forgot my password. Um, let's request a temporary password. So this is the first endpoint that will do this. Auth request temp pass password here. So uh, another thing to point out is this is going to leverage SendGrid as the email provider. If you don't want SendGrid, you can swap it with you know, uh, whatever email provider, we have another Mailgun extension. Um, if you want to integrate with another mail um, provider, you can make that API call and do that, but this leverages SendGrid. So there are some SendGrid environment variables that will come along with this. Um, you're from email and API key, so you just need to set up a SendGrid account. Anyways, um, great. So here we go. So if they are going to request a temporary password. The user will put in their email. We will just do a get record with that email to the user to see if that user um, actually exists. If they do, we'll generate a temporary password here. And these settings are all configurable. So I have a 16 character count, lowercase, uppercase, a digit, a symbol. You can even whitelist stuff. Um, anyways, whatever your preferences there are, that's configurable. Um, and then we're going to go into our user record and edit an object in there. Now, we have a temporary login object on our user. We're going to populate that with the password we just generate. We're going to set an expiration. Once again, this is going to be completely um, customizable. So I'm saying, hey, this is good for 15 minutes. Maybe you want an hour. Um, I would probably do, you know, max an hour. Um, and then we're also has this Boolean, whether it's used or not. So we only want this temporary password to be used one time and for one thing. And that's just to um, update their password, right? Um, so we update that on the user object. And then we have a very basic dynamic template that we send that temporary password in. Um, pretty easy to send, uh, you know, dynamic data in SendGrid. I can kind of follow up with uh, a little more on that. I believe it's, uh, I want to say triple curly brackets in there that are defined, but their documentation is, is pretty good if you want to double check that. Um, and what I do in the response here is I create a message. Um, what I say is if account with that email is found, we've sent a temporary password. Now, you know, depending on what kind of user experience you want, maybe you have logic in here that says like, sorry, no account found with that email. Um, I like to kind of be, you know, maybe a little anonymous in case there's, I don't know, a bad player trying to, you know, reset someone's password. But um, at the end of the day, they would still need access to their email. But anyways, that's kind of up to you. I like to kind of be a little bit vague here. Um, most likely it's someone, maybe they, you know, not sure which email they signed up. So maybe it's a good idea if you tell them <laughs> no one was found with that. So kind of up to you there. But anyways, they'll get an email with that temporary password. And then what they do next is they are going to actually come back and they do a temporary login. This will take in their temporary password. We'll do a check if it's been used already. So that's what this precondition is. We'll make sure that it hasn't expired. We'll validate that temporary password. You can see here we're in that temp login object. We'll make sure that's validated. We'll go ahead and update that user temp login to say it's been used as true and actually edit that record. And then we'll create an auth token for a, a temporary token. And this is important to distinguish with your front end. You don't want this token to be their, you know, auth token. You want this to be something 
kind of defined separate in their front end, that's only then used to actually reset their password. So okay. they would come in here, it's an authenticated endpoint, so that temp token is required to pass, right? That's a Xeno auth token. They enter in a new password, make sure it matches, and then updates the user record. And then I would force them to log in normally again. So this auth login, just kind of walking back through it. They request the temporary password. They come back and hit the temporary login endpoint. You define that auth token different than the regular auth token. So they can go in and hit the reset password. And once they do that, I would force them to log in with their full credentials. So, sorry, I know that was a little long-winded. I hope that uh, made sense. Do you have any questions um, on that flow? Um, no, I don't think so. That helped a lot, thank you. Something to note is that when you install the snippet, Margaret, um, it's actually going yeah. to install a new user table. Um, and what you're gonna need to do is you're gonna have to update the logic to when you're doing a get record request in any of those calls, um, particularly the set temp password, et cetera. You just wanna basically make the exact same um, get record request that Michael has, except just add your user table that you're defining from mm -hmm. and, okay. and just basically work back through those API endpoints just to make sure that the correct user table is connected. Because um, mm -hmm. that, that'll be the only thing that once you install the snippet, it's going to add all those API endpoints, but also a data table. Just update the logic in those API endpoints to your user table, and everything will function as per what Michael just showed you. Um, I have a follow-up, just a quick question about the auth tokens, the temporary tokens. There's no invalidation of tokens in general, right? Correct. You can't okay. invalidate a token. Um, it's simply once it's set, um, it's done. So even then though, which is interesting is that auth token that's generated, um, it, it, it's no different to a, a normal auth token, assuming you're referencing the same users table. So um, whether they log in through a temporary or through a, a normal login process, that auth token's the same. Where you do have some flexibility over authentication is on each of your API endpoints, you're able to define which table is it authing from. So to truly create a separation between a temporary password and a, a main password, you'd actually have to reference a separate user table, which contains the temporary user, which then contain, which you're then accessing that auth token. And then you just create different authentication based on, um, with that temp auth token, that wouldn't validate all your other APIs, except the one API that's set up to be your temp token. Um, whereas all your other APIs would just reference your normal user table to kind of create that um, segmented authentication. All right, thank you. Yeah, that's in the settings of each API endpoint. You can select um, which which table am I referencing as the auth for this uh, endpoint, and you can have as many as you want. You can also, um, in the settings of your user tables, you can enable authentication for any table you like, which will then search for users in that table, which will then yeah, become a drop you, down on your API endpoints. If, if you do decide to use your existing user table, you will have to build that object schema so that it, it works, which it's pretty easy. It's just a one object field. You can you can look at the user table it comes with to mimic it. All right. Well, I really appreciate you helping me out with this tonight. No problem.